All I can say is that the fake news just doesn't get, get it, it, do they? They don't. They don't. Ooh, and uh, looks like they're giving another pass to Joe Biden, who, uh, I'm sorry, but this was a terrible thing to say at the Coast Guard Academy commencement where he spoke. I can only assume that you will enjoy educating your family about how the Coast Guard is, quote, the hard nucleus around the Navy forms in times of war. You are quite, you're a really dull class. I mean, come on, man. Is the sun getting to you? I would think you'd have an opportunity when I say that about the Navy to clap, but being here together. Joe, the class is fine. You're lame. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Joe has lashed out at military audiences before. Calling a group of people dull because they're not laughing at your... That means, that's on you, Joe. But again, he's done it before. Watch this. This is, I think, overseas. A few years back, he's vice president, all full of himself. Watch. I recruited Johnson to the academy. I swear to the know that. Let's clap for that, man. Be slow here, man. Slow, dull, that's not nice to the troops. They don't appreciate that at all. All right. Anyway, we know what's going on overseas. Israel under siege again by the terrorist group Hamas. Yesterday here in New York City, we saw protests, pro-Palestinian protests. Now, this is a video I took actually from my office looking down on 3rd Avenue. They shut down 3rd Avenue. Here in New York, 3rd Avenue runs north. Everybody is walking south. You can't drive. If you were in an ambulance or anything like that, this is dangerous stuff. But I was inside, so I was safe. I didn't see this. This is what was happening on the ground. Take a look. <laughs> DailyMail.com's furnished us with this video. As I told you, I was upstairs. I'm actually glad I was there. Um, we believe that the people under attack there are Jewish, and they've been targeted because they are Jewish. This is happening in America. It goes on. Now, what the protesters are trying to do here is take over a major highway, the FDR Drive here in Manhattan. Um, why shouldn't they take it over? BLM took it over, and the mayor let them do that. And that's very, very dangerous. You can see they almost overwhelmed those cops. Fortunately, backup came in a short time later. And this is really sad. Again, right in the middle of this city, they burned the Israeli flag. An absolute disgusting display, of course. The media coverage of this has also been disgusting. They have been conned, or perhaps they're just anti-Semitic, many of them. Um, all right, got to go overseas now. And Richard Engel is a foreign correspondent, and I'm not terribly familiar with his work, but he is somewhat brave. He goes right into the middle of the conflict zones. Brave, he's brave. Um, and yesterday, he's, uh, he's in Israel, and there's a uh, fire going back and forth and he's working his heart out. Look at the reaction from the anchor as this guy is risking his life. The anchor is uh, Lester Holt. We'll see him in a moment. Israelis are run, 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 firing tear gas, run, run. but I think we are okay to hold here for a second. What is happening in Gaza needs to stop, and here comes the tear gas. 
shocked we heard a single crack. It sounded like it could have been a sniper fire. And late tonight, Israeli media report diplomatic efforts involving Egypt and the United States could produce a ceasefire in the next two to three days. Richard Lester. Engel tonight. Thank you. Kristen Welker is at the White House. Uh, yeah, whatever. Thank you. Uh, let's go back. Uh, uh, guys taking some substantial risk, and Lester there doesn't seem to, be, seem to be terribly impressed. I've noticed that about him before. I think he has a case of Trump derangement syndrome. It's affected him across the board. Goes all the way back at least to the 2016 debate. Lester was moderating. Trump was then a candidate. And uh, you'll see an exchange here. Just remember this. Lester Holt is absolutely wrong, and Donald Trump is absolutely right. Stop and frisk was ruled unconstitutional in New York because it, it largely singled out black and Hispanic young men. No, it, you're wrong. Uh, it went before a judge who was a very against police judge. Uh, it was taken away from her, and our mayor, our new mayor, refused to go forward with the case. He's absolutely right on the facts, and Lester Holt just mischaracterized it grossly. And Lester is still doing that. Uh, you saw earlier in the show, they took their show on the road to uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, they're doing a deep dive on the situation, race and crime inside Louisville. Take a look at this. Some say the tension and distrust has long existed, fueled by decades of racism and segregation. Some say. Did you catch that? Some say. It's been a long time since segregation. And look, these are black and white pictures. But some say. I would say that it's a long time since segregation. And we're not like that anymore. Uh, but still, uh, he then went to the crime numbers. And, uh, well, this is what he came up with. In Louisville, black residents represent 21% of the population, but were involved in around 50% of the police use of force incidents. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? I can't believe they actually bought a plane ticket to go all the way there with their cameras and ask loaded, silly questions like that and present data like that in such a dishonest uh, way. Now, it doesn't work this way, just 21% of the population, and therefore, what, it should be 21% of the uh, police force incidents? Sorry, but this is another hard fact. Black people were responsible for a majority of the crime, and oh, by the way, when it comes to homicide, 71% of the victims in Louisville last year were black. This is tough stuff. Unfortunately, they can't take it or they want to confuse people or they're looking for excuses. I don't know what's happening here, but I do know this. Donald Trump, again, was right. Lester, we need law and order. And we need law and order in the inner cities because the people that are most affected by what's happening are African-American and Hispanic people. And it's very unfair to them what our politicians are allowing to happen. Totally. Nailed it. Now this. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives do matter. Not the way the organization says. They only seem to care when a black life is taken by a white cop. Black lives do matter, including the life of 32-year-old Shalimar Burkett, shot and killed in Brooklyn here in New York on Monday night. She was shot at a memorial vigil for a friend who was also shot and killed at a party Sunday night, also in Brooklyn. 31-year-old Miles Bob Semple was shot after stepping on the foot of a gang member at a party. Silly dispute. Burkett was mourning his loss with a group of friends when someone drove by and opened fire. She was hit twice in the head. Burkett believed to be an innocent bystander, not the intended target. Police think it may be the same shooter who killed Bob Semple. No arrests have been made. The family says that they need the police. Burkett's mother also lost a son to gun violence three years ago. She got shot at a visual. What is this world is coming to? We definitely still do need police. Please do not defund the police. We're asking for the police to help find my cousin's killer. But we need to find these people as soon as possible. Thank you. 
I remember her as a sweet person. I remember her as a dearing, loving mother to her children and to the family. Real people are not saying defund the police. No way. Just the opposite. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.